You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcast on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for September 25th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where our lawn signs were delivered yesterday and our mail-in ballots came today, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. I already filled out my ballot and sealed it up in the two envelopes that it has to go one inside the other. So I don't have a naked ballot. No. My ballot is in is correctly enveloped. And I'm going to drop it off tomorrow at the county courthouse. They have a... Uh, drop off box there. Sure, if you can trust it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you we're going to trust it. So yeah. no, it's it's they're very um, diligent about that here because people right. burn the town down if they did if they. Yeah, that. and it's the state capital. There's state a lot capital. of lawmakers here, and people take it seriously. They do. Yeah. Yes. Now my ballot is sprawled out naked on the bed right now, <laughs> and I'm I'm like, who do Wonka I vote for? Got to Wonka. I, who yeah. do I vote for? I don't know. I'm not. I'm, I'm just being kind of coy, like. I don't know. Maybe I want to vote for somebody I'm else. I'm undecided. Is yeah, Kanye yeah. West on the ballot? I no. don't know. <laughs> so. I didn't even look. I didn't even read down the list. I just. Well, you know what I asked myself? Joe Biden's at the top, and that's who I voted for, and moving on. I asked myself, <laughs> what would Bernie Sanders do? No, you did not. Stop. Yes, We're going to no, no. out of there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yesterday, Bernie Sanders gave a barn burning stem he winding. He burned down the stage, didn't and he? And said, let's, you should got to get out there and vote for Joe Biden. Democracy. Yes, he did. So I'm going to do what Bernie Sanders suggested I do and vote for Joe Biden. And good, good. for Bernie Sanders for doing that. Yes, he no, did. No, I'm dead he, serious. He, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He is old enough and wise enough and has been around the block enough to understand exactly what's at stake here. And I'm glad he's trying to explain that to people who don't seem to understand that this is not just an ordinary election between the right. lesser of two evils. And I'm just right. like, sure, I don't want to deal with that. Nope. He um, he corrected that ye- yesterday yeah. uh, in a speech where he made it very clear. Uh, where do you want to start today? There, there's so much sad news. Um, yeah, there we, is. We, we recorded before Ruth Bader Ginsburg passing. We did. Uh, last week. And uh, many people wanted us to do an extra podcast, which was not possible. No, but it was uh, not, not possible. Right. You no. have in our notes, everyone has already said everything. Yeah, it's kind of true. I mean, yeah, she fought hard every day, right up to the day she died. And we can do no less. I yes. like that note. Yes. And, um, well, she did. She has done more lying in repose in the state in this in, a, in the Capitol Dome. In two days, than Clarence Thomas has done in twenty years. On the bench. <laughs> so uh, you know, it is it, um, she is a giant uh, yep. of civil rights. She is a giant of the court. She uh, was a wonderful human being, uh, and it is a tragedy that not that an eighty-seven-year-old woman passed away. My mother passed away last year, and you know, age and and infirmity catch up with everyone eventually. If you're lucky, you live to be that age and you have a record like that. But. Um, it is a tragedy that your your that our democracy hinged on this eighty seven year old woman making it mm-hmm. to eighty eight. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the tragedy, and this is where the whole history of not taking the courts seriously and not taking elections seriously has caught up with us. Yeah, all those people who looked the other way, pretended it wasn't a problem, who built the Republican monster machine, or pretended that it wasn't being built at all. Or that somehow both parties were equally to blame for everything all the time. This is all on them. Mm-hmm. You know, this mm-hmm. was this is a woman this who moment. carried yeah. who carried democracy on her frail little shoulders um, for far too long than anyone should ever be expected to do so. That's our job to fight. Uh, pick up the fight. Take up the fight where pick she left it. Pick up the fight from her exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So when we got the news that Ruth Bader Ginsburg had passed on on Friday, mm-hmm. uh, I. I mean, I saw the total meltdown on Twitter from people, you know, screaming and crying and upset. And I uh, didn't cry until I saw that one of our listeners had quoted me Mm -hmm. and said, you know, chop wood, carry water. 
And I, I had already tweeted that, that, you know, before her passing, Chop would carry water. After her passing, Chop would carry water. And then I saw someone had already thought that. And that touched me so much that someone had said something that they'd heard on this podcast in re- in reaction to a huge earth shattering event that mm-hmm. I really, it, it just uh, moved me very much. And that's when I felt the full weight of what had we had lost. And as a result of that passing, Act Blue received $91.4 million in 28 hours. Yeah. Yes, they did. Yes, they uh, did. And, and I wanted to repeat what my colleague at Crooks and Liars and uh, one of the hosts of Momocrats, Carolee, said uh, to me, me this week. She said, you know, we're, we have to live in the environment, the Republican-created environment where money is speech. Yeah. Well, guess what? Democrats are fucking screaming right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, if money is speech, can you hear us? $91.4 million in 28 hours. Can you hear us now? Mm-hmm. Uh, and there is a uh, another, another fundraising going on. I thought and had mentioned that the 2022 midterms start on November 4th. But it turns out they've already begun. And at bit.ly slash you are next 2022, there is a uh, fundraising website for four Republican senators, Grassley, Johnson, Rubio, and Toomey, Mm -hmm. that if they vote for Trump's nominee, money raised will go to these four senators' opponents in 2022. And as the website says, ask Susan Collins, we're not bluffing. Yeah, no. Yeah, they've already raised over $30,000 this morning, and I think it began today. So, again, we're screaming. We're, we're not kidding anymore. I mean, we're, we're not we kidding. Were, no, we this were is, never kidding. This but. is now, we understand, I think, now. And and that's why I'm not depressed this week. I, no. I mean, this week has been a really hard week. We, they've all They're all hard weeks. Yeah. But this week, thanks to, in large part, to Mitt Romney, yeah, we realize it's not Trump. It's not Trumpism. It's no. the entire Republican Party, and we are in a trench warfare with them. Yes, we are. They have allies. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to skip on past Mitt Romney because the the deliverer failed to deliver. Right. Um, right. The never Trumpers have scrapped their plans to build a thousand foot tall monument to Mitt Romney, the <laughs> noble hero and leader of the resistance, because. Oh crap! He's a Republican, yeah, um, and that's be- and that's because they're all fucking awful. I mean, and it was just it was just um, so predictable. That's the thing that's kind of exhausting. I'm sure everyone out there feels it. it's so tiring to see the same idiots make the same bloviating, bragging remarks, and then step on the same rakes, and then go, oh, oh golly. Um, I think I mentioned last week. I don't know if I mentioned it on the podcast or just in in uh, in passing to my wife that um, Stuart Stevens has always reserved uh, a couple of minutes in his many 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 podcast experience to, to just burnish the reputation of Mitt Romney, with an honorable, noble, decent you know guy. Uh, there's no there's nobody like him. You know he's he's the last of them. He's the few. But you know, I and and Stuart Stevens ran Romney's campaign in 2012. Likes the guy personally, but I'm I'm just I just you just wait for it, just wait for it. Oh fuck, <laughs> he's going to go ahead and throw in with the rest of the traitors and scum, and and ram through Donald Trump's nominee before knowing who the nominee even is. You know, it's first the first the verdict, then the trial. Um, and so yeah, surprise, Mitt Romney is just another Republican, and the Republican Party is a party top to bottom, side to side, full of people who should never ever be allowed to exercise power in this country ever again. They're terrible people. Um, Don't care if they're nice neighbors. Don't care if their barbecue is sweet. Don't care if they run a really good egg stand and tomato shop on the weekends. Fuck them. You know, they brought this down on us and they have been pulling and pulling and pulling at the timbers of the temple for decades. And they finally brought it down. And it just, it both infuriates me and in a bitter distant kind of way amuses me to hear them the 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 newly 
the newly born, the newly newly recovered, the newly saved never Trumpers, um, complaining. Um, if I may, just for a moment, have an editorial moment. I was listening mm-hmm. to Bill, Bill Crystal and Charlie Sykes talk on the Bulwark podcast today because I do listen to them, and I'm going to do this for 90 seconds, then I'll move on because this okay. is my thing. But in like the first 15 minutes, the two of them made fun of people who had lived in a conservative bubble for years and then freaked out when they left it and collided with the real world. And then they frowned on the two cool for school pundits and commentators who mock people who were trying to warn that the GOP is headed into a dark and terrible place. They mocked those people as alarmist idiots because don't you realize shit is fucked up and we should all be very alarmed. And they're both pissed off at conservatives who sat on their hands and did nothing to stop the GOP from going to hell and now dare to charge in at the last minute and put themselves in charge of brokering a peace deal among all the parties. And I'm like, you fuckers don't don't own a, own a mirror, do you? You really mm-hmm. don't. You did all of this shit. And it wouldn't bother me if you owned up to it, but you won't. Because then there goes your contract at MSNBC, and there goes your op-ed columns, there goes your book contracts, because then you're complicit. But they sound exactly chapter and verse and cadence and vocabulary like liberal bloggers from 10, 15, 20 years ago. And there's Mm -hmm. no awareness that they were ever involved in any of this. And the things they're mad about, especially the part about how dare these people come at the last minute and tell us what to do. (laughs) Shit, what do you think you've been doing for the last three years? And, And- the people who are mocking us now for warning the GOPs headed off the cliff are, are are monsters. How because we should be alarmed. Things are bad. That's what liberals have been telling you for thirty fucking years. That's what bothers the shit out of me. I did a Photoshop the night that Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away, and mm-hmm. it was of the Archangel Michael. And I did not realize that this month is the Feast of Michael Moss. Mm-hmm. My other colleague at Crooks and Liars, one of my other colleagues, Susie Madrak. Uh, reminded me that you know, this is this month is is Michael's month, and so I wanted to point that out because Michael is one of my favorite angels. He's the fighter. He's the angel with the sword. And uh, Susie sent me the prayer of Saint Michael, with which I was unfamiliar before this. Um, it is Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't ring your bell, uh, I'd also like to quote Shakespeare. (laughs) Go go for it, hon. Because... We are living in a time when we are fighting, Mm -hmm. and that is something to be grateful for, not something to fear or something to whine about. Uh, Shakespeare, I'm not going to take up all of this podcast to read the entire speech from Henry V, but Mm -hmm. the end of the St. Crispin's Day speech is, gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves accursed they were not here. And hold their manhoods cheap while any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day. Mm -hmm. This is this is a moment to be grateful that you are here to fight this battle. Mm -hmm. And I I realized, you know, Friday last Friday night, I did want to get under the covers (laughs) for overnight and just sort of mourn. Uh, And that's okay. And self care is important, but Mm -hmm. we have. As podcast podcasters and podcast listeners, a whole lot of technology at our disposal. Yes, we do. Uh, we have uh, the ability to understand and speak and fight and win. And we won't always win. But we have the ability to do so and we have the obligation to do so. And we have the power, you and I do, and a lot of people mm-hmm. like us do. To put words to thoughts, Mm -hmm. to put words to ideas, to explain as clearly as possible exactly what's going on, exactly how we got here, exactly what the stakes are, and exactly who you should be pointing at. Well, and don't, if if you feel too weak to do that, remember who you're fighting for. Yeah. 
You're yeah. fighting for kids in cages. Yeah. Yes, you are. You're fighting for LGBT youth. Mm-hmm. You're you're fighting for people that are weaker than you are. Regardless of where you are in the strength category, yeah. you're fighting for people that are weaker than you yeah, are. Yeah, there's somebody weaker. Than, there are yep. 20, 30 million people who are about to get their health care yanked out from under them mm-hmm. during the middle of a pandemic because the Republican- Including us. Including us. Because yep. the Republican Party are run by evil men who are perfectly happy to let people die in this country to prove some political point and, and so they- so they don't have to admit they're wrong. They would rather see millions of Americans die unnecessarily than admit they were wrong. And that is the kind of sin that gets you cast into hell for in the darkest circle of hell. The betrayal of the public trust is about as low in hell as you can get. And these people have betrayed the public trust, are getting thousands of people killed, are going to get well, thousands more. And they're more. getting it from, they're doing it for money. I mean, this is yep. the, the, the whole thing about all of, how did they come to this point of total on the air hypocrisy, right? Mm -hmm. Of no, 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 you know, that, that whole stuff with Merrick Garland, we Mm -hmm. really didn't mean it this time. Just kidding. Uh, It's money. It's dark money. That's making them do this. Yeah. Uh, It's the Mercers that are making them do this. And uh, again, that is, that is another thing that along with the courts that we have not paid enough attention to. Um, But I think you were setting yourself up there drift glass for a, uh, interesting conversation about uh, Senator State Senator Andy Menar. Andy Menar, yes. Um, because I'm a nerd, <laughs> I'm the kind of nerd who like watches um, city council meetings online when I can't attend them in person. Um, stuff like that. Uh, today there was a civic group meeting, a regular monthly civic group meeting, and it was um, the occasion of the fair tax in Illinois. It's being debated. Um, we've gotten literature in the mail. Uh, there are ads on television. It is simply creating a progressive tax in Illinois where the higher your income level goes, the higher the percentage you will pay goes. The reason we can't do that now is it's, it's wired into the U.S. or not the U.S., the Illinois Constitution that we can't do it. So there's an actual legislative constitutional ban against creating a progressive tax in Illinois. And we really need one. And our governor is a billionaire. And our governor says, you should be taxing me more. (laughs) You should not be taxing people making under $400,000 a year or $250,000 a year more. They pay enough. But there's a lot of rich people in this state who don't pay enough in taxes. And that's one of the big reasons why our books are so fucked up. And so there has been a really concerted effort to put a change to the Illinois law, to the Constitution, in effect, that would say that you can have a progressive tax in Illinois. You don't have to, if you need a tax increase, which you do, you don't have to raise it on everyone, which is what you would have to do unless you change the law. So today there was a debate uh, at what's called the Citizens Club, and I streamed it online, and Andy Menar really did put on uh, a clinic for how to thump a Republican uh, who comes at you with nothing but bullshit and fear tactics. Um, and, and this this is an, also an exercise in branding because yes. the people yes. that are in favor of this are calling it the fair tax the bill, fair tax. the fair it's tax the fair law, tax. which mm-hmm. is a wonderful name for it. And uh, the other thing is that the only thing the other side has on this is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> That's the and fact. there's a lot of lies and misinformation and it's, oh, it's going to raise your taxes. It's going to give the legislature the the ability to raise your taxes at any moment, at any time, without it, warning. You'll be, you'll be driven out of the state. And they have ads with grandmothers sitting there going, I can't live in Illinois anymore. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, ladies, so you have an estate worth how much? <laughs> it's, a, it's a mere $20 million. I've got it's three houses in $20 million. Dollars. I'm going to have to move to Florida Here, to my second home. Oh, here's, no. <laughs> here's a dirty little secret about Springfield specifically yeah. uh, in Illinois generally. There's There are entire communities in Florida built by Springfield architects yes, in the yes. 40s, 50s, and 60s because the, the town was full of people who designed buildings because of the state capital. And they got a bunch of money and they went out of Florida and they built their own towns. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. here's the terrible secret. Everybody in Illinois goes to Florida to die. Yeah. So yeah. the idea yeah. that a bunch of people are going to leave for Florida, well, they're going to do that right. already. 
Right. That's the whole well, plan. Well, they do that. They do that because they live in suburban Chicago and they don't want to pay property taxes right. like they do here. And it's cold. And that is and it's cold. And yeah. it's well, I I argue though with people mm-hmm. who balk at moving to where we are oh, because of too. the weather. Cuz we have St. Louis weather and it's nice. It's nice. 361 days out of the year yeah. we have no snow, no ice. It's tolerable. <laughs> Um, when it yeah. snows, it snows for real because we do live in Illinois. But no, their plan was, you know, we'll we we work at in state government. That's the always the irony. We'll work in state government, collect a pension, and move to Florida when we retire. Right. That's right. the plan. Right. So the idea that oh my god, a bunch of people are going to move to Florida is not a threat. It's the plan. No. It's always going to work. That's what way. happens. Yes. So you know, <laughs> again, threaten me. Don't threaten me with a good time. Um, so. So what do you do? Well, this is this is actually basic high school debate tactics. It is. And when Andy Denar, if he were a billionaire, would be governor of Illinois. He would. He would. The, the, just, that is the one requirement that he does not have. He's not a billionaire. And unfortunately, right. we live in an age right now where you have to be. You have to be. You have at to have a multimillionaire to be governor of Illinois. Well, so. And the previous billionaire came up during this conversation. <laughs> um, because and this is how you this is how. If you're dealing in a public forum where there are persuadable people, this mm-hmm. is the only place this actually applies is when you're actually having a debate one-on-one over a specific topic and there's presumably out there in the ether somewhere a persuadable audience who are sitting going, right. I'm not sure what I want to do. Well, we, and it's a it's a policy issue that not everyone understands. Yes, so you're actually correct. explaining what the policies are. Right, right. right. So you're, you're not – this tactic will not work with your crazy Uncle Liberty because your mm-hmm. crazy Uncle Liberty – Let's, as we've said before, let Sean Hannity take a dump in his skull every day. He's not reachable by reason. And arguments and facts will not persuade him. Do not waste your time. But if you happen to find yourself in an actual policy discussion with, with I guess, the guy from the Illinois Policy Institute um, or, or someone like that, and you're ready for it, um, this is how you do it. First of all, you come in and say, People who can write a $20 million check to oppose this measure aren't worried about putting gas in their car or making sure their kids are getting schooled. Boom. Oh, mm-hmm. so yeah, the people who are are I'm talking about are working class people. And Andy Menard kept coming back to the, a, a school teacher making thirty two thousand dollars. Um, the people who work at the coffee shop and you know, work at McDonald's, where I stopped to get this cup of coffee, should not be paying the same tax rate as someone who can write a check for twenty million dollars for politics. Right, that's just insane. Then, and the, that is, by the way, the people who are putting ads on yeah. against this fair tax are. The multimillionaires, right, right. Then you come back prepared to call your opponent's arguments for what they are. This is what I learned in high school debate when you've debated a team once or twice. Uh, Napoleon said something about never let someone fight you multiple times or they'll learn your strategy. Never fight them the same way. So once you're ready for it, you can come in and preempt their argument, which is exactly what Menard did. He said, I have a list of what I call whataboutisms <laughs> that I thought Senator McClure, the per- person who was opposing him, would bring up eventually. Well, he just went through all of them. So let's go through just a few. So he, <laughs> what he's doing right off the bat is saying what this asshole is going to do. Every time I bring up a fact, he's going to say, but what about this scary thing that might actually happen? What about this scary thing that probably won't happen? What about this scary thing I just thought up? What about this? bad consequence that might have happened once upon a time. And Andy Menard just just defanged all that by saying, don't listen to him talking about possible fictional future scenarios. Let's talk about mm-hmm. the here and now. Let's talk about the – and let's talk about the recent past. Because yeah. as he said, and I'm, it's almost a direct quote, we had a mad scientist in charge of Illinois named Bruce Rauner. <laughs> and mm-hmm. we were all trapped in his laboratory. And his, and his tax plan was a fucking disaster. We've tried this before. We've tried mm-hmm. what Senator McClure wants to do before. It doesn't work. Bruce Rauner fucked this state up real bad for four and years. Everybody knows it. And, and no everybody Republican knows it. The state of <clears throat> Illinois wants to talk about Bruce Rauner. Yeah. And so let's not go down the Bruce Rauner road again. Make your opponent debate Bruce Rauner. Yep. And the only thing you could say is, well, Rauner's not on the ballot. No, but his plan uh, is, isn't it? <laughs> and so put put your opponent on your ground. Make right. Bruce Rauner was two minutes ago, and everybody remembers what a disaster he was. And make well, your and opponent- let's remember also why Bruce Rauner got elected. Yes, he did. Bruce Rauner got elected because there was a financial crisis in Illinois. That's exactly and, right. And uh, the previous Democratic governor had to raise taxes, had yes, to did. raise. 
state income taxes uh, to a ridiculous amount of money, which was still mm-hmm. still lower than Alabama's rate. Okay, right. yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's not mention the part that we're lower than Alabama. We're, we were lower when when uh, I'm sorry, uh, Pat Quinn. When yeah. Pat Quinn raised Illinois, uh, when when Pat Quinn raised Illinois income taxes, he raised them to a level that was still lower than Alabama's. Or to quote and, Tom Hanks, Alabama. Alabama. And mm-hmm. so many voters flipped out about that. Oh, my God. Tax increase, tax increase, uh, tax increase uh, that they elected Governor Hedge Fund. Right. Who promised and to, Governor to, Hedge Fund's laboratory right. was to destroy public sector unions by refusing to sign a budget. Right. For two years, Illinois went without a budget. And? And Everything that could be funded by the state of Illinois had to be funded through a court order. Right. And he it rolled was back, a disaster. He rolled back the, the tax economy. increase. Yep. Yes, he did. He, so he rolled back this this modest, relatively modest tax increase. And guess what? A whole bunch of services that a whole lot of his constituents cared about got cut because there's nothing else Including to do. Autism. autism. Right. On World oh, yeah. Autism Day, got yeah. cut. <laughs> And, yes. and it was just, and it, it was a, it, we had our own sort of Sam Brownback moment in Illinois. Mm-hmm. That's so exactly let's, right. Let's yeah. let a rich Republican billionaire crackpot with his stupid ideas about taxes and, and, and revenue run the place for a while. Cause he's a businessman right. yeah, and he ran the state pretty much out of business. The Illinois state of Illinois was messed up before this, but he really broke it. And uh, everybody on purpose. on purpose, he, he broke the he broke the the tax structure and the government on purpose. Yes, in order to destroy public sector unions, and it didn't work because Democrats in the state legislature held strong. Right, they told him to fuck off, and yeah. so and he, yeah, he, so he got broken. You know, yep, he, he, he went to the election just and 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 of course he had all the money, you know, more money than God. So we needed an actual billionaire like. To run Godzilla against Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla, right? To right. fight, and fortunately, J.B. Pritzker's been worked out pretty well. He's been yes, extremely he's been good. A good progressive governor, and, yes. and he's handled the coronavirus well, crisis quite and well. He yeah. handled, you know, the the unrest that we've had, yeah, well too. I mean, he's he really does hit the marks pretty well and say all the right things and do most yeah. of the right things. And and for, we are going to talk about Brianna Taylor in just yes, a moment. Yes, yeah. we are. Uh, but uh, it was. It was a clinic, and since yeah, it was and, virtual, and I really, really like Andy Menard. The other thing about Andy Menard is he's an unapologetic Democrat. Yeah, yeah, in downstate, and that is something that uh, I something else I wanted to mention when I filled out my ballot, Drift Glass. When you fill out your ballot, uh-huh. there are seven county and local races on our ballot this year mm-hmm. where a Republican is running unopposed. Yep. That's how red our district, our area is. Yep. Uh, so being an unapologetic Democrat, progressive Democrat uh-huh. downstate, and being such a good communicator that he wins elections uh, and is very popular statewide. I think he gets a lot of funding from out of his district. But I think he does. He, that's because he's a talent and we, we appreciate him very well, much. And he really does demonstrate that to be an effective politician. Uh-huh. You have to be everywhere all the time. He is right. at every meeting. He's he at every public hard. seminar. He's at every march. He there. I don't know what he does in his private life, but um, and he's he's he points to the school that he went to when he was a kid, and that school's closed down because funding got cut. And right. he's well. That's the other thing that that I, we all need to remember is that mm-hmm. for a large segment of the white population of this country, mm-hmm. government is invisible until you take it away, that's until right. you threaten it. That's right. That's why, they and that's so, something that's got to change. That's why they feel so comfortable. I mean, if you think about it in in a, in a much more macro term, the Republican Party has never, in modern Republican Party, has never been anything but a coalition of various groups that hate the government for mm-hmm. various reasons. You know, the the because wealthy, they want to pollute, or they want tax yeah. cuts for billionaires, or whatever it is. Yeah, the the entire Constitution is one half of the Second Amendment and a bunch of yada yada yada, or they they're a bunch of bigots. They they put a whole bunch of groups, all of whom passionately hate the government in yeah. harness and now the government's <laughs> broken and everyone wonders when did that happen well it happened yeah. about 40 years ago yeah yeah my daughter youngest child yes. on facebook said i'm sorry we let you down brianna yes 
And that broke my heart. Mm -hmm. It's another example of Black Lives Don't Matter in America. And it's up to all of us. This get Again, this is where we have to fight. And I say we, meaning all of us. And you may feel da- tired and dr- downtrodden and exhausted by the Trump administration. It doesn't end with the Trump administration. No. The road is long. And uh, we have to make Black Lives Matter, all of us. Mm-hmm. We have to allow people of color to lead this movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I say allow. I mean, we need to sit down and and wait for others to lead this movement. That's what I mean. Yeah. Shut up and uh, listen is what, what we're trying to say. Shut up and listen is what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, it is disheartening. It is disheartening and exhausting. But there are people out there, depending on you, listening to my voice right now, to get up and fight tomorrow. And, and it's an honor to do that. Well, and the fact uh, that that youngest child feels a visceral mm-hmm. um, alliance mm-hmm. with this mm-hmm. movement, even though she yep. is a privileged young white girl mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. who has an awful lot going for her um, that millions of people don't. In, in relative terms, she's she's a privileged young lady, and that she strongly identifies with this movement, and and these are her friends. Yeah, And it's unfathomable to her that she would live in a country where people like this would be hurt by people who are manifestly bad and no one would do anything about it. Well, and she had a, a moment that she's written about for classes and, and I've seen her term papers about it. But she had a moment in her life that changed everything for her where she was with a friend of hers. Mm-hmm. And this friend's dad decided to drive them over to Dairy Queen for ice cream. And dad got pulled over while she and her friend were in the backseat of the car. And this was when, I mean, they were in grade school. Right. And the police officer asked my daughter, are you okay? Do you mean to be going with this man? As if he was kidnapping her. Mm -hmm. Because her friend was black and the friend's father was black. Mm -hmm. And that changed her forever. Uh, that there was, I mean, he wasn't shot in the back like, like some people have been this Mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it was an example of profiling. It was an example of bias. Uh, and it involved her personally and her friends personally. Mm -hmm. And she saw what that felt like. Uh, and, and from then on, it was, I mean, that was, I think probably at this point, she's 16. I think that was probably, as of now, the most formative moment of her life. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I figure yeah. those Tupac posters in her room came from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has Tupac posters yeah. all over her walls. No. Good for her. <laughs> yeah. This, and this is the future. This is what the future, yeah. hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, I hate to, again, unload all of the problems my generation created onto their young shoulders, but hopefully, she is what the future looks like. Mm-hmm. She and her mm-hmm. friends are what the future looks like. Yeah. And that, that, that comforts me greatly. It really does. Uh, you know, it doesn't comfort me, Drift Glass. Uh, Fox News argued in court that no reasonable person <laughs> would believe that Tucker Carlson's commentary is literally true or news. Yeah. That, that oh my God, that, that really made me laugh uh, yeah, in, well, in a very sad way. And they, but it, the sad part is they won. Yeah. U.S. District Court just, Judge Mary Kay Vicasil. Why, yes, she is a Trump appointee, says right. Wonkette. Right. Has thrown the suit out because no, quote, reasonable viewer, unquote, would believe anything coming out of Carlson's mouth. Right. That's what Wonkette said. Well, and that's, that's, now this is important to understand. This is what his own lawyers argued. That was their position. Their position yep. was, this asshole? Nobody believes this asshole. And you mm-hmm. can't listen to this asshole and believe a fucking word he says. So obviously, but it's 40 fiction. 40 million people do. Yeah. Well, but that's the position they take in court. And mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. of course, this will never penetrate the uh, the bubble that your Republican friends and relatives live in. But it's so clear that Tucker Carlson doesn't care. He knows he has a captive audience of mm-hmm. of sheep, of livestock, of reprogrammable well, meatheads. I wonder, though, I wonder if the bubble that the typical Fox News viewer lives in, mm-hmm. uh, if they don't go well, they won in court, 
That's all they had to do. It doesn't matter whether it's true or not. They won. Well, and winning I, is what matters. It, so again, I, I'm not sure. I because I'm a pretty decent fiction writer. I I can I do understand how their brains work, but and mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. You know, I'm yeah. not going to stop believing Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity and Laura Ingram, no matter what, until of right. course they break bad on me. They do a Megyn Kelly, in which case, you know, I never really liked that blonde on Fox. Mm-hmm, I'm much happier mm-hmm. with uh, with this Tucker kid. He seems to know what's what, and and it, they don't even notice. They don't notice how they're being swapped around, how the lies change every day. Their brains just don't process that information anymore. They're just cult members, and whatever the dear leader says is the truth. And the minute the dear leader is gone, another dear leader will come and set up shop on that territory, on that real estate, and they'll start believing some other psycho. And they're here for a long time. The Republican Party isn't going anywhere. This is the thing that I don't think we've fully grasped. This toxic real estate, this 90% of the Republican Party that is full-blown, full-out, proud, fascist, racist, asshole, fascist, are not going anywhere. Someone's going to lay claim to their votes and their eyeballs and their wallets. And whoever that person is, that's that's what the fight's going on right now. That's what the fight in the Republican Party actually is. Who gets to be the next guy to bilk these idiots for their votes and their money? And we're, we'll find out. But they're not going away. They'll, demography will take care of them. But they're way too past the dumbass event horizon to ever come back from this. Jeff Glass, I have breaking news. Uh, CNN has learned that it is going to be Amy Coney Barrett. Oh, that's not breaking the news. Christi- the Christian uh, nut job. Yeah. Who's well, so-called Christian nut job is going to be Trump's uh, appointee for the court. Yeah, that's not a surprise. That's no. not a surprise. And as and what, what amused a lot of people this week who are liberals is, or the number of never Trumpers who are freaking out that somehow some liberal somewhere may go after her in a way that <laughs> seems anti-Catholic and might make Charlie Sykes very oh. uncomfortable. And I, it's I, like, I saw Hugh Hewitt doing that sort of bullshit. Yeah. And, and it's, it's not like anyone actually has done it or did it or might do it. It's that some liberal somewhere might do a thing that might make me uncomfortable and I should be able to tell them not to do that because I'm a never Trumper. And because I'm a never Trumper, I should be able to govern discourse. Yes, from women who do not want 1964 Roman Catholic doctrine to govern my uterus. Well, and if we're going to fight over Catholics, Joe Biden's a Catholic. <laughs> you know, yeah. So I mean, you should just, just leave it, right? You should just leave that whole thing alone. Let's go down about the list. letting country turn into Handmaid's Tale mm-hmm. because I don't want you to say the c word uh, about my church. Yeah. Well, and okay. I think I think the the I think the smart play is to ignore her entirely mm-hmm. and go mm-hmm. after Donald Trump and Mitch yep. McConnell and yep. put Lindsey Graham on trial. Right. Um, right. Sweat these fuckers. Use all Every of your time, Senator. Susan Collins and Lindsey Graham. And exactly. Just play and the Corey, loop of them Corey saying, Gardner. I would never yes. permit this. It's never right. going to happen. Play Lindsey Graham, every single senator. You don't need to grandstand. You don't need to, to shout. Everyone, just play a loop of Lindsey Graham swearing. If you didn't think Lindsey Graham was an insufferable yeah. whiner. Listening to him beg for money on Fox. They're killing me. They're a, killing me, Sean. Everybody uh, hates off. me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody hates me. Just give me his money. Yeah. No, yeah. L- play the loop of Lindsey Graham saying, hold the tape. Hold the I tape. I will never permit yeah. this to happen. Just play it over right. and over and over yep. again. You don't need to testify. You don't need to speechify. Everyone knows who these to, people are. Yep. You, you don't need to even bring her up. But yep. you do have a national platform where you can do the one thing you're never supposed to do in the Senate. And that's remember the past. (laughs) No, attack a colleague. Right. You know, it's your opportunity to put your colleagues integrity on trial trial and roast them. For what they said. Yeah. For what they specifically said. Yeah. And talk about how, you know, millions of people have already voted. Donald Trump has said publicly that the reason he's rushing this through is he needs a fifth vote on the court to cheat his way into office. To cheat his way into a re-election. Yep. And it's okay with yep. you, and it's okay with Mitch McConnell, who doesn't have the guts to be in here today. And just, you know what? If Kamala Harris comes in with both barrels, that's great. Aim them at at the 
chair of the committee, Lindsey right. Graham. Make Lindsey him Graham. fucking cry. Make him yeah. shit himself and cry. Make him leave yep. the meeting feeling like nobody likes him and that the minute he's out of office, he can never go out in public again without a mustache. Because people right. will throw right. rotten fruit at him everywhere he goes until the rest – until his days on earth are over. That's how and they should every feel. Minute, every minute that Kamala Harris is at that committee talking, mm-hmm. Act Blue makes another million dollars. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just, just have like a running clock behind Jamie her. Harrison makes yeah. another million dollars. Keep talking. Keep talking, Keep asshole. Talking. Let's Keep go. digging. <laughs> All right. Uh, in national news, Missouri's anti-mask governor and his wife test positive for coronavirus. Missouri has more than 118,000 coronavirus cases and is still battling a steady increase in infections. But the governor has been an outspoken critic of mask mandates. What party is he in, Driftglass? Uh, green, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, no. Thinking? Republican no. Party. A Republican Party. He, oh, OK. He's yeah. often chosen not to wear a mask in public. You don't need the government to tell you to wear a dang mask, he previously said. If you want to wear a dang mask, wear a mask. And now mm-hmm. he and his wife have tested positive for coronavirus. Speaking of Republican governors who want to kill their constituents, Ron DeSantis of the great state of Florida is effectively trying to lift all restrictions on restaurants and other businesses moving to completely reopen Florida. A federal judge ordered the 2020 census to continue for another month through the end of October. Um, this is a don't get happy, but take a little good news where you can find it kind of thing. Right now, Joe Biden is up plus seven in most nationwide polls and leads outside the margin in all but two battleground states. I don't believe the polls. Vote like he's down seven. Vote like he's down seven. Vote like he's down seven. And uh, people that are doing a really good job of fighting and staying positive and fighting for what is right are the Democrats in Texas. And I am very proud of them. Whether Biden wins Texas or not, yep. I'm not even going to put that in any column of possibility. Mm-hmm. But I will tell you, Democratic, uh, the Democratic Party of Texas has done everything right this year, and I'm very proud of them. Mm-hmm. More than 28 million ballots have been requested, with another 42 million scheduled to be automatically mailed out to voters across the country. And as we said, we got ours today. So today, mine is, again, just lounging on the bed. Naked as the day it was born, <laughs> just being taunty and teasy. Um, uh, Postmaster General Louis DeJoy told the judge the U.S. Postal Service just can't reassemble those hundreds of high-speed mail sorting machines that were taken apart this year, uh, which was a project that more than a dozen states allege was intended to undermine the upcoming election. I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, we broke hundreds of them, but we just can't fix them. Sorry, just can't be done. And I suggested that maybe we should strip Lewis DeJoy for parts. That's not a terrible idea. <laughs> that's, that's not promoting violence. No, no. It's I'm just, just a thought. <laughs> parts of him are usable. You know, I'm just yeah. saying. It, it, that's, that's all I'm saying. Parts of him might be usable. Trump refused to commit to a peaceful transfer of power if he loses the election, saying we're going to have to see what happens. Trump apparently referring to mail-in ballots, which he has repeatedly attacked as widely fraudulent despite providing no evidence to support his claims and also his party is encouraging people to vote by mail. Mm -hmm. Continued, the ballots are a disaster. Get rid of the ballots and you'll have a very peaceful, there won't be a transfer, frankly, there'll be a continuation. Yeah. He is listening to two people. He's listening to Roger Stone Mm -hmm. and he's listening to Paula White. Yeah. Who says God wants him to be president for another four years. So and he's, uh, and he's listening to Adolf Hitler. He's, uh-huh. This is straight <laughs> yeah. up. You don't need elections. I just let me be president for life and everything will be right. fine. Right. And anyone who disagrees with me is a traitor. And I'm going to roll troops in and mop them up because they don't love America. That's. No, well, that and he's terrified of going to jail if he leaves office. He sees well, he that as be. protecting him. And he should be. Yes. Meanwhile. Trump's own FBI director, Christopher Wray, told senators the U.S. has not seen any large-scale vote fraud by mail or otherwise. Trump suggested ominously that the White House could overrule the FDA if the agency issued new tougher standards for the emergency authorization of a coronavirus vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. So no one's going to trust the vaccine is what's going to happen, and no one will take it. And, you know. Line up for your hydrochloroquine vaccine. It's delicious. (laughs) Uh, Another 825,000 Americans filed for state unemployment benefits last week under Donald Trump's leadership of the U.S. economy. economy. Mm -hmm. 
Nearly 500 retired senior military officers, former cabinet secretaries, service chiefs, and other officials signed an open letter supporting Biden for president, saying he has the character principles, wisdom, and leadership necessary to address a world on fire. Vote like they didn't do that, because that makes no difference. Makes no difference at all. Uh, One endorsement that might make a difference is Cindy McCain. In one state, that might yeah. Make Cindy a McCain's endorsement in Arizona might make a difference. Yeah. You're right. Uh, a grand jury, as everyone now knows, brought no charges against the Louisville cops for killing Breonna Taylor in her sleep. Mary Trump sued Donald Trump and his siblings for allegedly defrauding her out of tens of millions of dollars in inheritance. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna if I could get a front row ticket to that case, that's the one I choose. <laughs> I really I, that's that I want to see because she's got all the receipts and they're she published does. and they're yeah. they're documented. Yeah, all those stories that have come flooding out about financial irregularities have come from her trove of documents that mm-hmm. she kept mm-hmm. uh, because Donald Trump will rip off everyone, including his family. Mm-hmm. Uh, this week, that man said, "I think this will end up in the Supreme Court, and I think it's very important that we have nine justices, and I think the system's going to." Go very quickly. This is the same guy who has repeatedly lied to the American public about non-existent voter fraud and corruption in the upcoming elections and said that he expects the election to end up in the Supreme Court. He needs a fifth vote on the Supreme Court to help him cheat his way back into the White House. That's his only hope. So that's what he's that's. And and if he were just naked and obvious about it, that would be one thing. The fact that the entire Republican Party is cool with it. That's what we need to take with us for the next 20 years into the future. Yeah, and and seriously, that is what makes me uh, sanguine about this week, is that it's not Trump. It's the entire – what we've been saying for five years (laughs) since Trump started started running for office – Well. About it's not Trumpism. Don't you dare call it Trumpism. It's the entire Republican Party. mm -hmm. Came into bloom this week. Yeah. Well, and what it's liberals have been saying for 20 years. Of, oh, this is Republicans. Yes. What liberals have been saying since blogging began. What we right. have been saying on this podcast for 10 years. This is the Republican Party. They're all terrible. And they're all really, really okay with, with a fascist dictatorship taking this country over – Kicking democracy out the door, all that pious talk about democracy and freedom. Remember Freedom Fries? Weren't those great? Yeah. All right. that shit was all bullshit. It was all bullshit. They never believed a word of it. They never believed a word of it. And anyone who tells you at this late hour that they're caught by surprise, they just never realized it, don't listen to that person because either they're stupid or they're lying. Either way, you shouldn't trust them. Anyway. Dr. Deborah Burks won the Susan Collins Award this week. Yay. The class. She did. How'd she do that? Burks is reportedly distressed. <laughs> oh, man. I She's distressed happens. with the direction of the coronavirus tax force <laughs> that she sits on. And she's not certain how much longer she will remain because she's so distressed. The Department of Homeland Security has awarded more than $6 million in contracts since 2018 to the consulting firm where acting secretary Chad Wolf's wife is an executive. Let me remind you, Chad Wolf is the acting secretary illegally because he has not been approved by Congress. And really, I hope Joe Biden just invites five or six lawyers from Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. That's Uh what it is. Just bring me your list. Yeah. And let's work it out. Let's clean house. Let's clean house. Uh, According to a. DOJ official Attorney General Barr personally told President Trump about the department's bullshit investigation into nine, count them, nine discarded ballots in Pennsylvania before Trump revealed it in his interview with Fox News Radio. Mm-hmm. And that was a that was a good Chris Hayes tweet this morning, which was, yeah. did they discuss it on the tarmac? Yes. <laughs> well, it was it was nine discarded ballots, um, yeah. seven of which were opened. And had mm-hmm. votes for Donald Trump. But since Pennsylvania didn't start early voting until this week, next week, whatever, the, I can't get a straight answer from any news source as to whether or not these were primary ballots or not. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I know they were military overseas ballots, but how, nobody's on the ballot until the candidates are all set. And if you're still in the primary process, the candidates aren't set. So, um, I can, But it's nine. It's nine. Somebody it's found nine. nine ballots in a trash, and that is a national scandal. We have to throw out the entire vote by mail process 
And this, according to your crazy Uncle Liberty, is the end of democracy as we know. This yeah. is tyranny right. come to our shores, et cetera. A New York state judge ordered Elwick Trump to testify before the election as part of a fraud investigation into his filthy, filthy family's real estate business. Crooked, crooked real estate business. This week, Eric's lawyer said he was willing to be interviewed, but only after the election because he did not want his disposition, uh, his deposition to be used, quote, for political purposes. God forbid. The judge, however, is an actual judge who said New York <laughs> Attorney General Letitia James is not bound by the timelines of the national election and that Eric Trump must testify no later than October 7th. So get your ass in here or go to jail, Eric. <sighs> And isn't Eric, like, supposed to be running the companies and have nothing to do with the White House or anything to do with that? He's he's the one that, you know, oh, we don't have to worry about it. Eric is running the companies. Yeah. To quote the Screen Rants guy, I don't know. <laughs> Trump lied. He claims that the coronavirus affects virtually nobody as the U.S. death toll crossed 200,000 people. I, I just... The CIA, 200,000 Americans have died of this. Yes. A thousand are dying every day. And he is holding largely mask-free super spreader events yeah. a couple times a week, every week. He is trying to get his constituents sick. I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the thought of millions of people dying in service to the dear leader just gets him off. But whatever the reason is, he is trying actively to get as many people killed as possible before the election. And I got a feeling that part of it has to do with who he owes money to, like yeah. Vladimir Putin. Yeah. The CIS yeah. assessed in late August that Putin and Russian officials, quote, are aware of and probably directing Russian influence operations, unquote, aimed at interfering in the 2020 presidential election by denigrating Joe Biden. One of Robert Mueller's top deputies accused the special counsel's office of failing to fully determine what happened in the 2016 election, like subpoenaing Trump and scrutinizing his finances out of fear that Donald Trump would therefore disband their office. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing. This week, you've seen this week, the last several months, but this week especially, you've seen a lot of low-level people mm -hmm. risk their careers mm -hmm. to come out and say, I was at the table when Donald Trump said, I don't want to shake the hands of disgusting people and coronavirus is a good right. idea. I right. was at the table when he said this or that. I was at the table when he was making deals with Ukraine. I was at the table when he knifed this country in the back and left democracy dead in a ditch. And they're risking their careers. These old farts who've been in government forever, who have stars or on their retired. shoulders, who have retired. Yes, brought back from retirement. Who, yeah. who are like, who, I don't know if it's my place to say a thing about a thing because, oh, then go away. Because norms and propriety. Yes, yes right, yes. right. Yeah. That's the bar where they drink, norms and propriety. That's where yeah. they go get drunk yeah. at night. And I'm sure in 10 years, Robert Mueller will write a, a sterling book about how, you know, <laughs> he was there in the trenches. And my gosh, that, that Donald Trump fellow was even worse than you might have thought. Um, it just disgusts me that the old guard who was supposed to guard this country have fucked up so badly mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and really trashed. And therefore, the young people have to take to the streets. Exactly. That's what we're talking about. Exactly. Okay. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Harlan. Woo yeah, Harlan sent in by friend of Science Fiction University, Dogface Terman. Dogface Terman writes, we settled on the name Harlan because the cat with the glass paw was too wordy and the TikTok cat would be mistaken for an app. Yeah, we, we went back and forth. Dogface Herman and I did on, on yes. because it was the demon with the glass paw. The demon with the glass and, paw. And he won right. this contest with the city that pushed things off the edge of forever, which the I kitty. thought was the, the kitty. The kitty that pushes things off of the edge of forever. forever. Which yes. Is like, yes. Mwah, mwah. Which, and the irony being Harlan Ellison really, 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 really didn't like cats. So suck it, Harlan. Unlike another science fiction writer yeah. who always had a cat in his science fiction writing, right? That's Robert Heinlein. Robert Heinlein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they settled on Harlan. And uh, Dogface Terman has two other older cats, and they are not happy with no. the new the new mitten kitten. He has little white mittens. He's a great kitten. Uh, one of the older cats is hiding, and the other hasn't stopped growling for two whole days. <laughs> they will get used to Harlan. Harlan looks like a sweet little kitty, Aww. and and is a kitten. So go visit Harlan at our Facebook page and website. Whether and don't forget that Harlan. 
even though he's a kitten, he likes freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, mm-hmm. your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord. It's fr- I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I keep think- you know what? I keep thinking about that little girl. Who uh-huh. was sitting in the back seat of the car, and her dad was listening to the podcast, but listening to the Rachel Maddow podcast. Uh-huh. And the little girl said, "Is she gonna sing the freshly poured song, Dad?" <laughs> Only if she pays us. Only yeah. if she pays us. <laughs> she can pay us yeah. to sing the freshly poured song. So let me sing it again. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Harlan, cute baby mitten kitten. At our Facebook page or website, you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Thank you so much for your donations to our bat situation. Uh, yes. We are in the process of getting that work done, and your donations help us pay for what is an expensive process of getting our house uh Bat Bat free. (laughs) Bat proof, if you will. Bat proofed and bat free. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. And we don't want to hurt any of the bats because, as we've said, they are endangered and they are pollinators. So Mm -hmm. we want them to be safe, but we don't want them in our house. So thank you for donating to that cause. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love, and we fight every day, and we're proud and happy to do it. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties, with a little help from uh, Blue Gal that I know, have a limerick for you. <clears throat> the internet kitties did shout that our listeners must never doubt that Drift Class and Fran still believe, yes, we can go vote those Republicans out. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think of our life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.